Hello guys, in this video we'll build desktop applications using Tori which allows us to use Next.js with Rust to build powerful and efficient desktop applications. So let's begin. First of all, we'll get an overview of Tori and then we'll build the project structure using CLI to add both the JS and the Rust part. And then we'll build a basic desktop application, build it, run it and along the way we'll learn multiple concepts of different things that we'll be using. So let's get started. Go to your favorite browser and search for tori.app as it says build an optimized secure and front-end independent application for multi-platform deployment now there are multiple ways you can get started with tori using bash powershell cargo npm yarn pnpm bun but for this tutorial we'll prefer yarn so just click quick start now there are multiple ways in which you can build your front-end using html css javascript next.js quick swellkit white and integrate into the existing project but we'll prefer next year's for, for this tutorial and we'll learn lots of concepts related to tori uh, commands how can we uh, invoke from next year's our rust code back to our id now let's add project so as you guys can see we have no directories and files yet so open your terminal now i'll be using yarn for this tutorial which is the package manager if you don't have yarn already installed i'll drop a link to its documentation so you can follow and quickly install depending on which os you are using and let's get started with the project so we'll just do yarn create next app use yarn and it first of all will ask us for the project name so i'll just leave it to default my app and do we need a typescript yes would you like to have ESLint? Yes. Uh, Delvin CSS for now, I would say no because we are just building a basic desktop application and SRC slash directory. Yes. Uh, app router. Yes. And import alias. No. And let it complete. So once it's completed, you can see our new project. So we'll use this JS project to add our frontend. Now let's create a cargo project to add our Rust code. So open your terminal and just make sure to move into your JS project. And now we'll add a dev dependency to use Tori CLI. So Tori apps CLI. So once the dependency is added, let's clear this and now we'll use tori command to add our cargo project. So just do yarn tori init. Now for the app name, we'll just name it as a basic rust app. Then the window title. Now this is the title that will be shown for our window of our desktop application. Now I'll name this title as let's say uh, test app and for this location just keep default our dev server yes we'll spin up on localhost 3000 and before dev command is npm run dev npm run build and that's it now back to your project explorer as you can see there is a project edit src tori and if we go to tori con.json it represents all the things that we just added uh, in our uh, cli and if you move all the way down here you can see the window settings as well full screen as false height as 600 resizable true title the test app that we provided width as well now let's go ahead and start building our application now since we are using typescript so we have to exclude src tori from our js to scan it so move to ts config.json and here since node modules are excluded we'll just add comma and another thing that we want to exclude is src tori since tori does not have a node.js runtime so we'll set our next js to ssg or static site generation so move to your next config mjs and here in the output set to export that's all we need in terms of configurations now let's move to the rust part where we'll add our tori command and then we'll move to the front end part so move to the Rust project and in man.rs, let me first explain what's going on here and then we'll start adding our on Tori command. 
so the first line the macro just serves one purpose which is on windows when we run a desktop application it pops up the command prompt so this is just to disable that command prompt and this one is just to uh, run our tori uh, application now we'll add our first tori command now what is a tori command it's basically your rust function getting invoked from your uh, js so let's start adding we'll just add a basic greet so fn greet let's say name as str and we pass an email as str from our ui and it returns a string and we can print here saying inside rust code and format our response so we can just say hello uh, the name you are logged in with email and then we can pass the email so name and email this is just the response from our tori command now to make this accessible or invocable from our js we have to add a macro here tori command and inside our uh, main we'll just add default dot invoke handler and tori generate handler greet now if you have multiple such tori commands or functions that you want to invoke from your js please add all of them here comma separated now let's add the js part first of all open your terminal we need to add a dependency so just move to my app and here we'll just do yarn add tori app slash api this will help us in invoking rust uh, commands tori commands or rust functions from js and then just press enter now once the dependency is added move to the project explorer and in our src in the app add a form.css and form.tsx where we'll add our component export default function and form const name set name use state initialize to empty string initially and same we can do for email so just let's copy this email and set email so we just display a form to the user and allow them to enter a name and email which we uh, send to our greet command on our rust code so handle submit and event react form event and right here we can just do event dot prevent default if name and email then we can just invoke so for invoke we'll just add the dependency of tori api that we added so import and invoke from tori apps slash api slash tori and we'll just do invoke and string call the greet command and pass the argument as name and email which returns a promise so we'll just do then result console.log so we just log the result and catch any error and console log the error so this is all the submit function functionality that we need now let's add bit of html for our form so we'll just say return div class name as form container and form here we'll just do on submit and call 
and I'll submit and then we'll just say div class name form group and right here we'll just add a label and html for name and then here we can say name and add an input so in the input we can add a few uh, prop so id as name type as text value as name on change we want to call set name e dot target dot value and the last thing we want to add is required so that's for our input now after this div we'll add another div let's maybe copy this to utilize the maximum we can and reuse just change this to email and email type as email so it uh, checks for the format as well and the value is email and set email that's pretty much all that we need here in the div now let's add a button to submit type submit submit that's all that we need for our component and let's just close it so that's all for our component now let's add its css so i just quickly added this css which i'll drop in the description of this video you can just copy paste no point wasting time on css and now let's use our form so move to the project explorer in the src app there is page.tsx now let's use it here so we'll just simply remove all the default stuff that we have let's remove this and here we'll just say class name flex min screen flex call items center justify between p24 and let's just add our form that's pretty much all that we need to do so move to form.tsx and on top add use client since it should be a client side component and import our css so dot slash form.csx and now let's for the first time run our application so open your terminal and cd to my app and here just do yarn tori dev so let's wait now after compiling and running this will pop up a new desktop application window so let's move to that window and test our application so there you go this is how our application looks like and we can add our name here let's say semicolon semicolon hit uh, semicolon.com something like that let's add the network tab so we can basically debug or inspect our application as well in the console and we just press submit and there you go hello semicolon you are logged in with email so basically this is the exact response which our rust code is returning and now let's go back to our id now if you see clearly here inside rust code which just we printed in our man.rs so basically our js is able to invoke our greet command or greet function which is inside our rust code now this is super helpful when you have some program where you need memory efficiency or network calls or you want to use the benefits of rust programming language so that's it for this video guys